Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this final lesson in Week 26 on electrochemical reactions. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the standard electrode potential. Grade 12s, today we will investigate standard electrode potentials and discuss the conditions under which they are determined. And then we will describe the standard hydrogen electrode and its role as the reference electrode. Let's join Simbolelo to help us with these concepts. We start off with what an electrode potential is. Let's begin by taking a closer look at a zinc half cell that's not connected to any cell. In the electrolyte solution of zinc ions, the number of positive ions is equal to the number of negative ions. The solution is electrically neutral. The zinc plate is also electrically neutral because it's made up of zinc atoms that have the same number of protons and electrons. But when we place the zinc plate into a solution of zinc ions, a reaction occurs that changes this electrically neutral situation. A zinc atom from the electrode loses two electrons to form a zinc ion. We can represent this reaction by writing the oxidation half reaction Zn goes to Zn2 plus plus two electrons. The electrode is now negative because it has two extra electrons. And the solution is now positive because it has gained zinc two plus ions. We give this difference in charge a special name too. We call the difference in the charge between the electrode and the electrolyte solution, the electrode potential. Now, there's an imbalance in the charge in the half cell, and this imbalance needs to be reversed. The interesting thing about oxidation and reduction half reactions is that reduction is the reverse reaction of oxidation. So a reduction reaction can reverse the electrical imbalance. The extra electrons on the electrode attract a zinc ion in the solution. The zinc ion gains two electrons and forms a zinc atom on the electrode. This is a reduction half reaction and is written as Zn2 plus plus two electrons goes to form Zn. In the unconnected half cell, the rate of oxidation is equal to the rate of reduction. This means that a chemical equilibrium is established. Let's take a look at the two half reactions again. To represent a chemical equilibrium in a half cell, chemists always write the reduction reaction as the forward reaction and the oxidation half reaction as the reverse reaction. And when we rewrite the oxidation half reaction, we write it from right to left and then combine them into a single equation. Oh, now I can see. Reduction is the forward reaction. Oxidation is the reverse reaction. And the two reactions take place at equal rate in the zinc half cell, I suppose. Yes. And that means a chemical equilibrium is established and there's no change in the concentration of the zinc ions in the solution. The half cell is electrically neutral, although there are continuous changes happening at a microscopic level. We observe no measurable potential difference between the electrode and the electrolyte on a macroscopic level. So we must conclude that the electrode potential for this half cell is zero volts. The electrode potential of a single half cell cannot be measured. The electrode potential can only be measured relative to another electrode. For this reason, a standard electrode is chosen against which other half-cell electrode potentials can be measured. Simbolelo will tell us now how we can find the electrode potentials of different half-cells with the use of the standard hydrogen half-cell electrode. <laughs> If we want to arrange half cells according to those with electrodes that are the strongest reducing agents to those with electrodes that are the weakest reducing agents, we need two things. Firstly, we need a half cell against which we can compare all other half cells. We call this the standard half cell. And the hydrogen half cell has been chosen as the standard half cell. Secondly, 
we need a set of conditions that will make the comparison between the different half cells and the standard hydrogen half cell fail. These conditions are called standard conditions. That seems to be important in all science experiments. It would be impossible to compare two things if other conditions did not stay the same. Exactly. Every experiment must be a fair test. The standard conditions for a half cell are as follows. The temperature of the electrolytes must be 298 Kelvin. The concentration of the electrolytes must be one mole per decimeter cubed. And for electrodes that use gases, the gas pressure must be 101,3 kilopascals. Let's take a closer look at the standard hydrogen half cell. This half cell has a special glass electrode that contains a platinum plate. Hydrogen gas is bubbled over a platinum plate into an electrolyte containing hydrogen ions. The equation that represents the chemical equilibrium established in a hydrogen half cell is written as 2H plus aqueous plus two electrons is in equilibrium with H2 gas. Platinum plays no part in the reaction as it's an inert metal that simply provides a surface for the gaseous hydrogen to react with hydrogen ions in the solution. Does that mean hydrogen is a strong reducing agent? Not really, Nombulelo. Hydrogen is not a very strong reducing agent, but it's also not a very weak reducing agent. This is one of the reasons why the hydrogen half cell was chosen as the standard electrode. Hydrogen occurs in the middle of the range of reducing agents. That means its electrode potential is in the middle of the range of values for reducing agents. We call this electrode potential the E0 value and it is measured in volts. Remember, we can't measure the electrode potential between the electrode and the electrolyte of the hydrogen half cell directly. Instead, chemists gave the hydrogen half cell an E0 value of 0,00 volts. Although some electrodes of half cells will be stronger reducing agents than the hydrogen electrode, some will be weaker reducing agents. So when we connect a half cell to the standard hydrogen electrode, we use a center zero galvanometer in the external circuit. The nickel can move to the left, giving a negative reading, or it can move to the right, giving a positive reading. When we combine a zinc half cell under standard conditions with the hydrogen half cell, we form a galvanic cell. And the reading on the galvanometer is negative 0,76 volts. So what can you deduce about this negative value? The negative reading on the galvanometer indicates that the zinc half cell is more negative than the hydrogen electrode. So the zinc electrode must be the anode in this galvanic cell. That means the zinc electrode is a stronger reducing agent than the hydrogen electrode. We say that the negative reading on the galvanometer is the E0 reading of the standard zinc half cell. So the zinc half cell has a standard electrode potential or E0 value of negative zero. Right, great talk. There's something I need to tell you about the cell notation when using a standard hydrogen cell, which I didn't quite cover in the video. Usually your cell notation is anode, anode electrolyte, cathode, cathode electrolyte, etc. with a salt bridge in between. However, however, in the standard hydrogen half cell, okay, your hydrogen, your standard cell, whichever it is, whether they're using the normal one, which is your hydrogen, or sometimes they can suddenly say, oh, we're going to use copper as a standard electrode, whatever. But your normal standard hydrogen half cell, your standard half cell is always placed on the left hand side. It's always, always on the left hand side, okay hand side of the cell notation, left hand side. So it's either going to be, depending on which way, whether it's working as an anode or cathode, it's either going to be platinum, you see, which is your catalyst, comma, 2H plus, 
goes to H2 and then your salt bridge or platinum H2 to 2H plus, depending on whether or not it's anode or cathode. But please note, it's always on the left hand side. So please don't make that mistake. Great. Right, so let's just summarize what else you learned in this uh, lesson. First of all, your electric potential. Your electric potential is the difference in charge between the electrode and the electrolyte solution. So remember, you've got a beaker and you've got an electrode and there's electrode solution, okay, electrolyte solution. And the difference in the charge between the electrolyte and this electrode is called the electrode potential. And that is a definition you need to learn. The standard conditions for the half cell, you have to know. This is very important. They like to ask you, they'll talk to you, and we'll talk about this later, why these um, standard conditions are important. And But most importantly, it's because you need to keep things Fix, variables fixed, okay? And if you want to get at the same voltage as is listed on the redox table, then you have to obey the standard conditions. And they are, the temperature has to be 298 Kelvin, the concentration of the electrolytes has to be one mole per decimeter cubed, and if you're using pressure, I mean, if you're using gas, then the pressure of the gas has to be 101.1. 101.3 kilopascals. Please make sure you understand that. And finally, your standard hydrogen half cell, which everything's compared against, is 2H plus in the aqueous form plus two electrons gives you hydrogen gas. Um, and it's found in your middle of your redox table because the reason we call it a standard half cell is because everything is compared to it. Everything on the redox table is compared to it. Right. And that grade 12 is this at the end of this lesson. Please make sure that you understand the standard hydrogen half cell and how it works. And please go and do the questions in the assessments. And they like giving questions where they swap out. Instead of using hydrogen, they use, I don't know, something else, like copper or zinc. And then you have to use the same principles as you would for your hydrogen half cell. So please make sure you understand this so that you can do that. Have a great day.